started. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. So um, I have a fun story to share because in my newsletter, I put this week all the ways that I used oils at camp. And I'm not an outdoors person. And so being outdoors for a week with girls camp, 200 girls, oh my goodness, it was hot. And it was, I'm kind of glad it's not this week. I guess this week's even hotter than it was last week. But um, I, oh shoot, I was going to show you what I used. So I put all the many things that I used on this uh, camp. It, it, we were in cabins that were air conditioned, thank goodness, or I wouldn't have survived. But I brought my bag of oils and constantly, oh, here's Diane, constantly people were asking, do you have Clary Comp for cramps? Do you have Deep Blue for pain? Do you have um, On Guard uh, to run in the diffusers? Do you have throat drops because girls <laughs> coughing and keeping everybody awake? The list went on and on and on. But the thing I forgot to put on the list was that um, doTERRA's sunscreen line is coming out in July. Very excited to have a natural <coughs> sunscreen option for us. But uh, somebody <coughs> put, many years ago, somebody put that the doTERRA diaper rash cream works as a great sunscreen. So huh. that's what I brought for my sunscreen. And I am not sunburned. I wanted you to realize I'm tan. And maybe it looks a little sunburned, but it's not. I am tan and I am use this here. I used it on the back of my neck. I used it on my face and I was in the sun a lot. So the doTERRA diaper, diaper rash cream must have zinc in it. Is that what it is? Zinc oxide. Yes. Zinc oxide. <laughs> anyway, it worked. Yep. Zinc oxide, 25% skin protectorant. Anyway, it did great. So I will see how I like the, the new stuff that comes out. Our new line of sunscreen will come out in july so that'll be exciting melody thanks for joining us so glad you're here Woohoo! Um, but i wanted you to know that tip because we still got to wait a while they were hoping that the sunscreen and everything would come out in uh, may but it's been pushed off just a little bit so here we are in the heat of craziness without our new line anybody else have an oil story they want to share from the last week or whenever i do go for it hey um, so actually my grandson got a bad sunburn and I got this book out to see what would might help. Yay. So I use this sunburn remedy, 25 drops of lavender, 25 of helichrysum, 25 of peppermint, and then the rest um, fractionated coconut oil. Yes. And so we exper he had a bad sunburn. He was at Typhoon, Texas all day long. And uh, this worked so great. We, we used some other kind of sunburn remedy that was, so we did a little experiment. And in the morning he got up and he said, grandma, put some of that oil stuff back on that. And he totally looked normal the next day. Isn't that amazing? I don't know. It looks like there are a bunch of sunburn remedies, but that one works really great. Oh, uh, well, that's got helichrysum in it. That's the best stuff ever. So that is so cool. I'm so glad you turned to that. Oh my yeah. God. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, okay. Anybody else have something they want to share? I have one. Go for it, Diane. My grandson had been throwing up for a couple of days and the second day he was just dehydrated and his stomach hurt so bad. And his mother, whom you know, um, put, oh, she got the little book that she got from you, you know, the little, oh. um, spiral bound thing yep. anyway and then looked it up and she put coriander ginger and digests in in a capsule and gave it to him within a minute his stomach stopped hurting and hit throwing up completely stopped and he was great from then on isn't that crazy i have said about digest in so many times it is the fastest acting oil because you can put it on your said that last week in the yeah. little <laughs> Soon. You too. <coughs> yep. It's I use it a lot because unfortunately I get hungry later than I should be eating. And I have to take that and then I can sleep. And so my food won't come up while I'm sleeping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Settles everything down. Ooh, that is so awesome. All right. Anybody else have something they want to share? So many good things. It makes me so happy. 
Um, sometimes when I'm away from you all for a long time, because I between my daughter getting married and getting COVID and going out of town and then girls camp and, and I start to think, oh my goodness, this doTERRA stuff is a lot. Why do I do this? And I just want you all to know that I love you to pieces. I do this because I love it. I do it because I love helping people. I love serving people. And then I, some of you were very kind to write little notes. My daughter's put together a birthday book for me for turning 60 and um, reading sweet notes from some of you and just the experiences of life have just helped me realize I love to share. <laughs> I love to um, find things that work and then share it. And so doTERRA does that for me. It provides an avenue for me to do what I love. And I appreciate you all being here because then I have somebody to share it with. So thank you all for being here. We're going to turn the time over to Becky tonight. And Becky um, has officially moved over to, to be um, on our team. Not that she's really uh, share, not that she um, does the business, but that she's officially with us, which makes me so happy. And she has been teaching for us for a long time and just willing to share her knowledge. Becky has moved, and I can't remember, is it Kansas? Kansas, okay. So she doesn't live here in Austin anymore. She's in Kansas and um, her husband retired, right? And you moved to Kansas. So a little bit of change in her life. Um, I would love for Becky to tell us a little bit more about her and what she does. She teaches Felden Christ, hope I said it right, Felden Christ method of um, movement for the body and how to help our bodies continue to move and have um, help as we get older. And she just, I attended some of her classes and she does an amazing job. So cannot wait to hear what she has to talk with us tonight about posture and using oils in ways for self-confidence and self-image. So turn over to you, Becky. Okay, I'm ready. Can I share my screen? Oh, I can as soon as I say, yep, now you can. Uh, Y'all see that? Yes, mm -hmm. it's great. Wow, looks awesome. You like the colors? Mm-hmm. Me too. It reminded me of being in the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, I start all of my online Feldenkrais lessons with this statement. My name is Becky Beeling. I'm a Guild certified Feldenkrais practitioner. Today is uh, Tuesday, June 7th, 2022. Yay. <laughs> and one of the things that I learned in my training, which for those of you who don't know anything about the Feldenkrais method, it's a way, uh, two words of movement improvement. We help people do better whatever it is that they're already doing. We don't look at ways we can pick on people and say, well, you got this problem here, let's work on that. In fact, one of my favorite quotes, and I've got a couple more from Moshe Feldenkrais himself, but it came from a man who worked with Moshe for about nine years, David Zimmick Burson, who has done a tremendous amount of promotion of the method. And he was laughing, you know, because somebody had said the same thing that I hear a lot when I teach is, we do these really slow, gentle, soft movements and, and why? Well, David said, <laughs> we do that because we know now about brain plasticity. It changes our brains. It changes the opportunity for our brains to help break up bad habituated movement patterns that we have acquired for numerous reasons. For example, I had a lady that came to me and she operated three computer screens at work, three big ones. They filled up her desk and she was looking at Excel sheets all day. Another lady that came to me ran two separate monitors as an ultrasound technician. So she had her device in one hand that she was working with a person and keyboarding with her non-dominant <coughs> going screen to screen. So sometimes work demands that we treat our bodies not so kindly. Sometimes we get hurt. Sometimes we have surgery. Sometimes we're living in a situation that is very difficult. Uh, we get sick, others get sick, uh, people die, we move like me. So how do we maintain our, ourselves so that we can help like 
Shalene was just saying, help others because that is one of the joys of being on the planet. In fact, I was thinking on the way home, one of my favorite proverbs is those who help others are themselves helped or those who refresh others are themselves refreshed. So this evening is for you to refresh yourself and give yourself permission to have grace and ease in your life. So Moshe talked a lot about posture because we have a very rigid image of what posture should be. And that has a lot to do with our self image, what we perceive ourselves to be. And how does doTERRA help that? Well, first of all, let's talk about what posture is. And it's simply the way that we carry ourselves, the way that we've organized ourselves for movement or sitting or whatever, which is a form of movement. And our posture really, really matters. And here's why. Can you all see these? Oh, yikes. <laughs> I need a picture of that to show my Please. <laughs> If I can send these to you, I used to teach anatomy for a massage therapy school in Austin, and I loaded up my PowerPoint presentations with things like this <laughs> to, to help them not be so afraid of learning anatomy. But our posture matters in the ways that it reflects everything about us, our emotional state, our history, uh, psychologically, emotionally, socially injuries or surgeries that we've had, the relationship that we have with our homes, our friends, our environment. It affects our breathing. It affects every aspect of the way that we live. And I love this drawing of the skeleton of the young man with the saggy pants. Yeah. <laughs> just thought that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, our bodies do adapt over decades and centuries and eons and to think that we would need to have a longer spine and more ribs to accommodate <laughs> something like that to me just to go, when I saw that <laughs> but what we see here in this upper left <clears throat> uh, imaginary x-ray view of a skeleton is how many of us go through our days because we're now much more sedentary than we were. And for, for very good reasons, for many of us, we're tied to a computer screen for a variety of reasons, or we're tied to our cars behind the wheel. We drive like this and maybe we drive that way or sit this way because what we're sitting on does not help us have more optimal posture. So just some ideas about what posture means for us in our environment. And this by all means is not an inclusive list. What does unhealthy posture do to us? <laughs> well, first of all, it's exhausting. And for those of you who may have had a mother like me with very long, sharp, uh, pointy fingernails poking in the middle of my back between my shoulder blades saying, stand up straight. So right away you go into a military style posture and you can't sustain that. It is not a natural way for us to carry ourselves. An unhealthy posture, and you could think of that military style posture as unhappy or, or as unhealthy because people pass out doing that. You know, young men who stand guard for long times at the tomb of the soldier, uh, an unknown soldier, for example, or um, for whatever reason, the Queen's recent Jubilee. Um, it is exhausting to stand and not move for a long time. One of the reasons that posture can become unhealthy for us is that it compromises our joints, as you can see from this young man, very devoted to his computer work. And if he were to stand, if you could imagine him just straightening his legs and coming to stand, coming to upright, he would not be able to do that and probably come into a a more aligned neck posture. His head would be bowed forward and his spine would be rounded way back. And I've seen this happen in many people who have been used to working with computers that your posture over time will adapt to what you need it to do. But there is a, um, a price to pay for that. There has been some studies recently with the devices that we hold like iPads and iPhones that when your head is in that position, 
It can weigh up to 60 pounds with the force of gravity acting on it. Normally, uh, a regular old head weighs between 10 and 12 pounds maybe, and when you balance that head successfully over your torso, it should weigh nothing, literally. In gravity, when you're upright and perpendicular, all those forces that come through your body should reduce the weight of the head that you have to carry on a very slender spine at the uppermost end of your body. We also know that unhealthy posture requires more muscular effort to move and it constricts and constrains our emotions, our feelings, our breath. It's fatiguing and tiring and it affects our mood and our well-being. And again, this is not an inclusive list. It just I hope gets you to thinking a little bit about posture that's not so great. Moshe Feldenkrais, the developer of the Feldenkrais method, said that we move in accordance with our self-image. And when I first read that, I thought, no, we don't. But the longer that settled with me, the more I agreed that that is the case. And David Zimmick Burson said that our self-image, no, actually Moshe said this in his book, Awareness for Movement, our self-image is smaller than our potential capacity. It's one thing I heard over and over in our training is that every human being is highly potentiated for innumerable successes, opportunities, and very often we do not take advantage of that. One thing I remember from a professor I had during my graduate school that I didn't care for her much, but she said this and I'll always remember it, is that often our failures in hindsight are missed opportunities. And I think the older we get, as we go through life, we recognize that that's probably the case. All that said, Moshe recognized that we move because of the way we feel, because of the way we perceive ourselves. And Shalene, I'm sure in your work recently with young girls, adolescents, that you see an awful lot of very poor posture, uh, girls closing into themselves. You don't often see, yeah, like this man, this is the same man, by the way, on the left and on the right before he became aware of how he was standing and figured out ways to alleviate his uh, difficulties. Hmm. Yeah, so it's interesting to watch adolescents, especially grow into amazing people. They do not realize the potential that they have, often given the societal pressures that they're under. Hmm. Our self-image is formed on our motor cortex. Actually, it's on the sensory and the motor cortex. And it's unique for every individual. And I love sharing this picture because people don't realize how highly potentiated their hands, lips, tongues, noses, eyes are for sensory input and output. You get sensations in and you, your brain makes a motor decision for you. What this shows you is the amount on your motor cortex, if you think of it as real estate, that's devoted to specific parts of you. And your hands, your mouth, and your tongue are enormously involved with your brain. Your brain's enormously involved with these parts of you. When you lose the sensation or the awareness of these parts of you, they become almost mysterious. We also know from, for example, people who have strokes where different parts of their sensory motor cortices are damaged, that that place can be taken over by other nerves that can use that real estate to make up for the deficits of that stroke, for example, or an illness may do that or an accident. So this area on our sensory motor cortex on our brain is highly, highly needed by our brains to help us move optimally through every day. Wow. The word homunculus means little man in the brain, by the way. <laughs> ah. Yeah, little man in the brain. So my first suggestion for anybody is to find alternatives 
for the way that you stand and the way that you move. And this lady in the upper left, her name is Esther Gokhale. She's from South Africa, and she has done a lot of work with helping people move more freely when they have back pain. And she got her start for her method by examining how people throughout the world and in ancient cultures move through their days. And what she found is no matter how hard these people worked, their backs, as you can see, are beautifully aligned. They do something called a hip hinge instead of folding forward with stiff knees, they are able to find this posture of keeping the spine long by engaging through their pelvises more, um, more strongly. Uh, Moshe said that the pelvis is your center of power. As a martial artist, he understood that pretty well. The skeleton in the upper right, you can see a contrast between a hip hinge on the right and a rounded spine on the left. And the idea there is that you'd see um, that how active the hamstring muscles are, the muscles that form the back of your thigh, mm -hmm. come into very strong play as a way to keep you from falling on your face. Mm -hmm. We also see in small children the most elegant postures. And for those of you who had the opportunity to be around little ones as they squat so perfectly with their heads that are oversized for those tiny little bodies. And I watch them amble around on these two tiny feet and I think, oh my gosh, how do you do that? How do you control for that? They do and they do it beautifully and nobody teaches them. Yeah. But when you find these alternative ways for standing and moving and sitting and getting through your day, you'll find that you move with more ease, more energy, because you use less effort. In addition to that, you'll become more stable. Your risk for falling or stumbling will be lower. As your movement gets freer, you, you literally unleash your spine and you'll become taller. Can I can I ask a question? Of course. I find that when I carry things, if I it doesn't even matter if it's just a binder, you know, if I have something in my arms when I'm going upstairs or have a long ways to go, I just get tired. It doesn't, I I I seem to not be able to walk straight. Uh, I can remember one night at, at camp as I was walking back to my cabin, I didn't have anything in my arms. I had forgotten my water bottle and I was like. I had nothing in my arms and I thought, oh, I just feel so good. I was just walking with, you know, it was night and day to having something to hold. Is that odd? Is that? You know? No, in fact, uh, because you, you do several things when you have a load that you have to carry, you have to figure out your brain will help you figure out very quickly. How do you manage that? If you need to go from place A to B with this load, one of the things I didn't include in this series of pictures is women who bear heavy weights on their heads and they walk. Right. Their posture and their gait patterns are absolutely elegant. They have developed a way of swaying as they balance those things on their heads. There's a woman named Ruthie Alon who was one of Moshe's first students who developed her own method uh, of movement improvement called Bones for Life. And one of the things that she does is take a seven foot piece of muslin like you'd be using for a quilt. And she makes a, a like a wreath out of it. She wraps it and coils it and then places it on the head as a crown. But the weight of it creates this postural dilemma of how do you move with that. Yeah. And you'll, if you look for pictures of women who bear weights on their head, they have some kind of a crown, a support, yep. so yep. that the weight then is distributed throughout their spine and their ribs more easily. But their gait is important too. It's very smooth. Their strides are beautiful. And the sway they've got side to side is gorgeous. So is that what you're telling me? I need to carry everything on my head? I'd, I'd recommend it. I'd give it a try. Really. I do that every now and then I put something up on my head and see wow. how that is. Most people in our culture would say, well, I can't even get my shoulder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how am I going to do that? But, you know, these people are used to very hard work. Yeah. Uh, another thing that Esther Gokhale made comments about was the 
beauty of the body she was she has pictures in her textbook of, of uh, a tribe of natives who are wearing loin cloths and you see the musculature in their backs and in their buttocks and how very well refined they are the place where their spine lies is in a ditch because the musculature on either side of it is so well developed to pull them up into fullest extension that that's where the spine is. It's not all bumpy like this guy back here. Yeah. I mean, you, you yeah. could run your finger down the back of that gray t-shirt and go spinous process, spinous process, but all the way down to the back of his pelvis. And you can see what that does to his knees. For women, this is completely devastating for the knees because our knees come inward at an angle. So when you stand, and I've seen so many girls and women stand with their feet pigeon-toed, mm -hmm. their knees knocked together and straight, their knees are locked backward, there's no flex or bend in the knee. It's very damaging over time to the knees because of the angle that our knees come in from our femurs, our long bones, because we have a wider pelvis. And if you don't understand that, stand next to the man in your life, roll up your sleeves and look as you stand right next to that man, you'll see that the angle of your forearm comes out quite differently from the yeah. angle of the man's forearm because you have a wider pelvis. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's a wider angle going outward at the uh, forearms, but at the knee, that knee goes inward, which means the patella, the kneecap is being forced laterally to the side. Yep. That's why lots of women have crunchy knees. And yeah, go up and down stairs and people know you're coming because they can hear your yep. knees. Yep. <laughs> so what do we do about these stressful lives that we live in? I mean to tell you, I asked my class last week, does anybody have good news? <laughs> and one of the women in class had some marvelous, wonderful news. It was fabulous, but it's very complex. We live in an extraordinarily complex world. And what do we do to reduce or even abolish stress in our lives? We keep taking on and taking on and taking on. Well, you have to make those close examinations. Sometimes you just have to say, no, I can't add that to my list and start finding things that somebody else could do instead of you. Sleep hygiene is crucial. If you don't get good, deep sleep, your brain does not clean itself at night. You have a, a cleaning system in your brain that's similar to lymph. It's called the glymph system. It just has been discovered within the last 10 years and just by accident. It's one of the hallmarks of dementia and Alzheimer's is that sleep interruption or not having good sleep creates a, a less stable uh, junky situation for the brain. We all need to eat nutrient dense foods. And I mean that from the depth of my heart, regular moderate to higher intensity physical activity is crucial for keeping our brains active. There is a hormone that is secreted when you exercise, when you're physically active called BDNF, brain derived neurotropic factor. What that does is stimulate the, the production of new nerves in your brain, specifically in an area called the hippocampus, which is responsible for memory, for feelings, for all kinds of stuff. So having this regular moderate to higher intensity physical activity, and I say every single day of the week is crucial. Positive family and social interactions are also a lifeline. If you don't have those, find them, clean them up, do what you need to do, get rid of them. If there's somebody in your life that's toxic to you, that's an important thing to, to address. These first five things have to do with driving a chronic inflammation condition in your body. If you are dealing with chronic low-grade inflammation, you are setting yourself up for all kinds of trouble. So I recommend that you really, as seriously as possible, address these first five things. Michael Mersnick in his book called Soft Wired, he's a brain researcher, says to learn new things. Feldenkrais says, learn those new things by moving. It, that also stimulates the production of BDNF. 
try new things, cook something new in the kitchen, go to a different museum. And then I kept thinking, how can I make this pie slice smaller and smaller so we get to essential oils? And if you're struggling with any of these things, use doTERRA's beautiful essential oils as a positive first step to reduce your stress, reduce your chronic inflammation load. Why? Well, you can go to PubMed. Here's the link for it. And just put in what I did, essential oils and. And all of these things popped up. Everything that I saw. And this was wow. just, you know, for a couple of three minutes. Now, I did not take time to read the studies, but people are looking at how essential oils affect every one of these things, plus who knows what else, mm -hmm. because they're looking for answers to problems that continue to persist. Mm. Yes. Love Anything? it. Cognition there. Yeah. So some of the recommended oils that you may want to try and you'll have your favorites. I've got mine are bergamot, cassia, grapefruit, Roman chamomile, spearmint, lavender, patchouli, and frankincense. Patchouli takes me right back to college, way back in the late six, very late sixties, early seventies. I smell that and I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> I have had so many people say that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So you all know all this stuff. I'm not going to spend time going over that. But whatever your favorite oils are, or ones that you want to try, by all means, give it a go and see what happens. Mm -hmm. The blends are incredible. They're available for you to try to mix with other things. Um, and most of them affect your mood in some way. Our sense of smell is highly regulated by our brains. It can take us to a lot of places. There are times when I walk in my kitchen and I smell coffee and I go right back to my grandmother's house and I remember her Pyrex percolator on the back burner of the stove. She'd make a pot of coffee in the morning and then boil it all day and <laughs> drink it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and sometimes that, that fragrance comes back to me and I'm right back in my granny's kitchen. Mm -hmm. These are my favorites and I'll ask you in a minute, what are yours? What hooked me, it, I was invited to a doTERRA get together in Austin and the person running the party put a drop of frankincense and breath or breathe on my wrist. And man, I inhaled that and went, what is this? I've got to have more of that. Recently, I stubbed one of my toes and I had a lot of swelling. I thought I might have fractured and went through the oils book and found Siberian fur and helichrysum. And to me, those two oils, the uh, fragrance of that blended together was absolutely heavenly. Mm -hmm. uh, for deeper sleep, almost every night I put in my diffuser on guard, plus a couple of drops of serenity and a couple of drops of breathe. And I'm hoping it helps my husband sleep. And, you know, maybe retirement is the key to that, but <laughs> he's sleeping like a dream. Uh, after I cook, and I cook a lot, I love cleaning my counters and diffusing with lemon plus lime. I put that in the bottom of my trash can on a piece of uh, napkin or paper towel to help the stench <laughs> stay down. Cleaning my sink after a spree, I use anything I've got in a spray bottle. Usually it's On Guard or uh, the uh, abode that recently has come out, which I meant to put in there. I deleted whatever I had there. Every night, my feet get massaged with deep loop plus fractionated coconut oil before I put on my yoga toe socks to keep my, my toes differentiated. Uh, in my water pick, I add about a half cup or, or less of On Guard mouthwash and get that deep into my gums. And every time I've been to the dentist, the dentist says, uh, your gums aren't bleeding. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Okay. And just because this is one of my favorite things, just because I'll keep it by the kitchen sink. And after I've been on my feet for a long time, I'll roll some of that on my wrist and go, oh, yeah, I am special, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So here's why I, I think essential oils can really help us go from that level of awareness of being a slouchy, slumpy person into something that is a little more viable and, and functional on the planet, it has the ability to help shift us from sympathetic, 
which is fight, flee, freeze, and faint, to parasympathetic, rest, digest, restore, and refresh, recover, any other of those things you want to put in there. Because of the way these act, when you massage, when you smell, when you open your, your box of your order and you go, ooh, yes, yes. <laughs> this is great. You take the cap off of the body better and look how smooth that top is and you apply it. It's just really a nice way to treat yourself. And when you yourself improve your self-image, guess what's going to happen to everybody else? Yeah. Moshe said that movement is life. Life is a process. You improve the quality of the process and you improve the quality of life itself. And doTERRA improves your process. Therefore, it's improving your quality of life. Ta-da, any questions? That was awesome. I'm not sure about questions, but I would love to say that you put into words for me what doTERRA does for me. And I, I have a hard time explaining that. So some, I took pictures of some of your slides because that's what doTERRA does for me. When I open a body butter and I put body butter on me, I am taking care of myself and I'm getting the benefits of the oils. And I just, I just feel better. When I, I have a spray of my favorite oils that I put into a, a water spray and I made a whole bunch of them. So when it runs out, I can just replace it in my shower in the morning. So I start with, oh my goodness, peppermint and frankincense and cedar wood. And I'm just immediately not just smelling it. I take a deep breath of it and get it down into my lungs. And I feel better. I feel about, you know, I'm ready to start my day. And that's what doTERRA does for me every step of the way. Everything you mentioned, it's amazing. And I mean, God forbid I would say this, but here I am saying it. I love cleaning my kitchen sink because I'm using that wonderful fragrance of On Guard or a boat or whatever it is that I've mixed up. And it, it's, it spurs me to want to have a clean sink and wipe down the counters and clean the floor and just get it done. So the next morning I walk in and... Oh, can so do it all good. over again. <laughs> so good. I love yeah. it. Any other questions or comments? I think we're good. Thank you so much, Becky. And it was Lee a pleasure. Put, Lee put it in here. So awesome, Becky. And I've already had people ask for the recording and more people texted me while the class was going on that they couldn't make it. So this recording will help a lot of people and be one that I'm sure gets watched over and over again. So much great. Well, I'll be happy to send a PDF of the slides too. That would be great. That okay. would be great because I would love to have that. We'll do that. Yeah. yeah, feel free to distribute it. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you all for your attention. Yeah, so awesome. Thank you, Becky. That was yeah. great. Next week, Dr. John's going to teach us about essential oils for athletes. Now, I'm not an athlete, but I aspire to do better. So we can all consider ourselves you know, let's get some good tips for how we can be more active and use the oils in our lives as athletes. So see you next Tuesday. Stay on for a few minutes oh. if you want to uh, hear the business part. Yes. Melody. So Shalene, are you saying that there are essential oils for movement? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Anyway. And thank Becky you guys knows so that much. Very well. Oh, Becky, I did have another question. You said your name was Beeline and I've been saying Bailey. It's fine. Either way, I think bailing is the more appropriate or the more correct but pronunciation. You think yeah, bailing, bailing. Okay. I don't care. Just don't call me late for dinner, right? Oh, I got it. <laughs> You're so awesome. Mwah. Love you all. Thanks for coming in. And those who want to stay, feel free. <laughs>